what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video and i just finally finished the last episode of the mr mcmahon documentary episode six the finish and this one was a a good way to cap off things uh it kind of put everything in um the whole series as a whole kind of finishes it off in a way where you know for those who don't know and i think the way they framed up the documentary i think this was a lot for people who didn't know a lot about what vince mcmahon you know has been you know dealt with or been through and the stuff that he's had to deal with i think a lot of us that are you know involved in the wrestling community and wanted to know about some of this information i'm sure a lot of us probably knew about it but for some the you know that wasn't well versed in vince mcmahon lore you know they definitely would have been very thoroughly surprised what happened on the last episode uh, me personally obviously we went over the janelle grant situation and how everything played out but it was very interesting to see all this footage was filmed a lot of this footage was filmed like 2021 2022 and how things kind of played out and then we get some updated footage from like bruce pritchard like 2024 and how he felt about it it was it's kind of different between what people were saying in 2021 and you know what ended up happening so uh they started off the episode this was this was wild i even had to clip this so at the beginning of the episode vince mcmahon talks about his brain essentially is like having multiple computers in his head and one of the producers asks what is you know one of your computers thinking about right now and vince decides to say um it has something to do with having a lot of fun and it's involving sex so they already started off the the episode with that clip and then it it makes sense why they started it off like that because you get this kind of idea of damn bro he, he he thinking about sex and this took place like around 2021 or whatever so he's like my man over here thinking about sex and they like, we over here talking about you vince so it was very interesting that that was the clip they decided to go with we know why with the context of how everything else played in the episode but i think that was the clip that they decided to go with was quite telling like okay this lets you know what we're about to get into for the rest of this uh episode um they uh talked about um vince mcmahon uh doing the whole deaf angle and his limousine getting blown up and how people actually believed that he had died and they were really going to try to run with that story as long as possible and you know people were calling in trying to make sure he was good only to then you know the whole Chris Benoit situation happened and then you know they kind of had to cancel things and then uh that's when they started you know potentially going at Vince McMahon like well you know you've already been in uh you know previous steroid scandals with steroids a part of this did he have roid rage could this have been a part of it Is that, you know people were trying to allude to that but ultimately what came out of it was studies of cte and how that affects the brain getting multiple concussions and you know some people had objection to it some of the wrestlers like stone cold was like well i remember having one concussion but i don't remember having too many concussions like that if you're having too many concussions then there could be a situation of maybe you know you may be doing something wrong so it's interesting to see that some wrestlers didn't all the way agree with maybe CTE was the thing that caused what happened with um what happened with uh uh Chris Benoit to be the be all end all situation. But ultimately, after that situation happened, that's when WWE started to switch and pivot more to a safer in ring style. The the head chair shots they got rid of that, which. At first, a lot of people weren't, you know, happy with that, especially like some of the wrestlers, you know, Undertaker wasn't really happy with that. But then he understood why. And, you know, he felt like if Vince says it's best for the business, then we're going to do that. And then you got to also understand that things started to switch, especially with sponsors and, you know, them being a publicly traded company. They're trying to appease to these sponsors. Hence, 
That's why when it changed from TV 14 to TV PG, uh, a lot of other fans weren't big fan. You know, they weren't really happy with the change, especially, you know, just how the product was presented. It was really super, super, super kid friendly. And um, it was one of those things where it was like, yeah, you know, even for me, I was just and I stopped watching the product because it was just it was it was too childish. It was too kiddy. It wasn't for me. I didn't really too much care for it. Not to say that I needed the gratuitous of the ruthless aggression era or the attitude era to come back or anything like that. It just it wasn't appealing to me, you know, just from a, a watching standpoint. So at that point, at that time, I kind of checked out, too, but I understood why they did it. You know, it's you know, it was to, you know, appease to certain brands. Granted, I feel like we're living in an age now where, you know, it, for the most part, it is PG, but they push the limits a little bit more. And they give you more storylines that are less kitty, and they give you, you know, more real, like real storylines in the sense of you can buy into what's happening here. You know, it's 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 not child's play. You're like, there's some serious issues, serious storytelling going on here that you can sink your teeth into. Um, they also talked about the Undertaker streak and how uh, the day of the match. Vince went to Mark and said, hey, I want you to do the job for Brock. And then uh, when he got to the ring, um, then, you know, Mark got, you know, concussed uh, at the beginning of the match, essentially. And Vince, you know, viewed it as, well, maybe he didn't see where he got concussed, but maybe, you know, he was just kind of in shock at how things were going to play out. But ultimately, Vince went with him, you know, to the hospital to make sure everything was good. But that's very interesting to know that the day of, he just said, you know what? We're going to give this to Brock. Because originally, the plan was to undertake it to go over. But they gave it to Brock, which I'm going to still be one of those people to die on that hill. Brock didn't need this. He didn't need, he didn't need the streak, per se, because he was already a made man. I get why they did it, but I just don't think he needed the streak to you know, be already a made man, which he already was, um, let's see what else I have here, um, I also talked about, you know, obviously the fans not being, uh, you know, not liking the PG era for the most part, and then they talked about Shane coming back, and that episode where Shane, you know, came out there to a huge pop in the feud that they built off that, and I like this segment because this segment was essentially showing the different moments and how much Shane was doing all he could to get the approval from Vince, to get some type of proud moment from Vince. I mean, if you really think about it, Shane wasn't no traditional wrestler by any means, but my man was willing to jump off of any and everything, do some of the craziest spots and stunts that nobody else was doing. And we're talking about full-time top guys weren't doing some of this stuff. And he was doing that because he wanted to show, he wanted that appreciation. And he ended up finally getting it uh, when he faced the Undertaker at that Hell in a Cell. Uh, he was, you know, very happy to bring his sons out there. And when he went back to Gorilla, you know, his son, uh, his dad gave him a hug, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, uh, patted him on the back and that's all he wanted. He, you know, he told him, you know what I'm saying? I love you. And that's all he wanted. And his dad was like, I'm proud of you. Like, that's all he wanted. It's crazy. The same kind of similar stuff that Vince wanted from his dad, Shane wanted from him. And the fact that Vince said it himself, like, yeah, I'm, my dad didn't give me that, you know, and I'm okay with it. And I don't really give, you know, Shane that, but, you know, at that moment, he wanted to do that. That's all Shane wanted. And even the other wrestlers were saying, that's all Shane wants. That's, that's literally all Shane wants is to essentially, all Shane wants to do is essentially, you know, make his dad proud. You know, he'll do whatever spot, whatever situation just to make his dad proud. And even the wrestlers saw that. So I thought that was a cool moment for them to show that. And, you know, just you can see the same stuff that Vince went through. He essentially put his son through. And, you know, 
Vince, you know, Shane, obviously, I wouldn't say obviously, I'm sure he maybe would have wanted to be next in line in succession to Vince McMahon when, you know, Vince, whenever he decided to step down, but you kind of knew the writing was on the wall. Stephanie and Triple H were going to be the next ones up when it came to taking over the company. So they asked Vince McMahon, does he can uh, see himself ever retiring? And Vince said no. Uh, he viewed people that retire, you know, as weak and, you know, what you're going to do when you retire. And he basically said, you will just die. So that'll be just it. That That's his words. That's how he views retirement. He's like, man, I'm never retiring. And other people agreed. Other wrestlers like Vince will never retire. And Booker T said a, a very interesting line from this is prior to everything that went down. Ultimately, with Vince, he said he said it would take a nuclear bomb for him to retire. Boy, oh boy, did that nuclear bomb come at uh, at a worse time, I guess you could say, for Vince, because initially Vince did end up initially retiring the first time because of the hush money allegations and stuff like that, and you know he kind of lay low and whatnot, and, and even around that time, Hulk Hogan said he don't think the company would survive without Vince. Boy, was he wrong because the company is flourishing without Vince. Uh, that's what Hulk Hogan had said. But he ended up coming back. He ended up coming back. He knew, you know, he was going to try to sell the company, do what he can, you know, make some money out of it, whatever, whatever. He, he wasn't going to go without a fight. But ultimately, that was not the case. Um, they even brought back Bruce Pritchard and I think um, Dave Meltzer, um, this year, um, I'm, I'm not sure when, but they brought them back in 2024 to kind of add more to the documentary itself. And Bruce Pritchard made it very, very clear that he's seen the few episodes that I'm sure they showed him already of the documentary and he didn't like it. He didn't like it. He thought it sucked. He thought it painted Vince McMahon as this horrible human being. Like it was like a hit piece. And he was like, that's not the guy I know. The guy I know is the you know the same man that when I found out that my wife had cancer and they only gave her a four year life expectancy, he put up his money to make sure she had the best possible care that money could buy, and you know it paid off. That you know he did that for my, me and my family for my wife. So no, I don't. I, I think what y'all had you know put out there was just you know to make Vince look bad. And my counterpoint to that. I get he's going to have loyalty because why wouldn't you have loyalty to someone that's looked out for you, for your family? So I, I I completely understand that. But at the same time, I don't think this documentary, from what I watch, really presented Vince as the ultimate evil guy. I think what they did with this documentary was kind of show you that the lines between his character, who Vince is as a person, and the Mr. McMahon character, they're more intertwined than Vince himself wants to put out there. They are. Once they brought up the Janelle Grant situation and the details on the case, I had already seen most of it. So it wasn't new for me, but I'm sure... Other people, it may be, you know, new for them. And then they brought up the Ashley situation. You kind of see they would clip some of the stuff, like with the Ashley situation, they would clip some of the stuff with half their, her allegations and how she felt, you know, how Vince would treat her um, on television. You feel me? And you start to see some of Vince's reflections on how he felt about certain things in his personal life. Or, you know, what he may have been going through. You've seen the reflection of it on television. You just didn't know that this is actually, you know, maybe a situation that he's referring to. Or referencing. Referencing. Or someone that's pissed him off. Or didn't, you know, potentially do some sexual favors for him. Now they're paying for it on television. Like, here's the thing. And I, I we, we can only go off of speculation. Because these are, you know, a lot of these situations, allegations. But... Let's be honest here. The man has had some crazy wild segments on television. That's how he thinks. 
That's that's how he views things. I mean, if you want to be honest, just look at the whole Vince McMahon versus God. Come on, bro. That was a shot. That was a little jab at, at HBK for coming back and, you know, after all those years and, and turning his life to Christ. That was what that was. Like, oh, you, really? Okay. You, you worship God now? Okay. And he views himself as a God, essentially. Like, he, he doesn't believe in God. You don't give a damn about that. He believes in his business and what he's done. So I, I say that to bring up the point that the lines clearly have been blurred with the Vince McMahon character and who he is. We see, we've seen over the years just an extension of that. And I think this is what this, this documentary shows. For those who know about Vince and have watched him over the years, most of this stuff was probably not surprising. The most surprising thing for me was the whole conversation he had with Shane that Paul Heyman talked about. That was really surprising how ruthless he was. But most of this wasn't surprising. This kind of fits what we've seen on television. And it made sense. Is he inher inherently a bad person? I don't know about that. But I'm pretty, you know, has he probably done some bad things, some messed up things, some probably evil things? Maybe. We still don't have concrete evidence, evidence but the, the plausibility of some of the things that have been said or have been rumored, or it's not hard to believe. That's all I'm saying. And I think this is what this documentary kind of puts out there. The idea that Vince could do some of these things all you have to do is kind of just look at what we saw on television not saying that he did all of these things that he's accused of but the idea that he could have it's not hard to believe so for those who don't ain't well versed in vince they'll be like yo what the fuck this is kind of crazy this guy's a he's a freak he's a he's a he's a little freako but for those who are well versed and heard about the stories and stuff like that, there's nothing, nothing that we haven't heard. But I think it's interesting to hear Vince's thought process, how he views things, how he thinks about things, his upbringing, why he does the things he does because of his upbringing, because of his relationship with his father and essentially doing the same thing to Shane. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. So either way, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, just hearing some of the things Vince would say and, and kind of getting his psyche on things. It, it really puts it puts his life a little bit in a different perspective because now you kind of get why he's not 100% all the way right in the head. Like when it comes to business... He is sharp. He is sharp and he knows what he wants to do and he's ruthless. But when it comes to other things like emotions and feelings and, and love and stuff, you can see it's not there. It's not that he it's not even that he wouldn't want it to be there, but it's not something that he's used to. He's more he's more used to just, you know, dealing with it and moving past it. Oh, it's a lawsuit. I right, cool. If we can make money with this person, we'll make money with them in the future. That's a, he cares more about the business than anything else, which I think a lot of us under probably you know already knew. But either way, this was a pretty uh, good series. I told you I was going to check it out. I binged it, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this series. Like I said, I made a playlist for every single episode, so you know watch it at your own pace and come back and check out the different videos. And we just have that discussion. So comment down below. Let me know did you guys enjoy this documentary series as a whole? What was your favorite episode? And did the documentary provide you some information that you didn't know about before? With for you know with Vince McMahon and and does it give you a little bit of better clarity of who he was as a person or do you more or less still have the same opinion you had before watching this documentary? But I appreciate all the love support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150k. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.